Namaste. And welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. Nina Nam Anjali Hey. And today we're going to listen to Trump's speech at the United Nations, um, the 75th session, um, where he talked about the China virus and how it has affected the world, how U.S. is working on distributing a vaccine to end this pandemic, and, you know, and talked about some other stuff that that the U.S. has done um, that Trump's been a part of, like um, groundbreaking peace deals in the Middle East. Um, You know, he talked about the environment, but his main, his main speech was dealing, the dealing with China, making them accountable. So we've been talking about time and time again, making them accountable. So many people, I looked at the numbers the other day because I started to spiel numbers that I had remembered from the last time we had talked about the virus. Um, And so I was like, oh, I better check my numbers. I think it's over 6 million people worldwide have gotten the virus. In the U.S. alone, over 200,000 people have died from it. Yeah. Yeah. Our economy shut down. I lost my job. A lot of people lost their jobs. It's rough. And and there's no accountability. There's been no, you know, um, going and investigating. There's been no, like, we're going to fix this. This We knew it came from the lab. Yeah. You know, and they let the planes go out and yet somehow in Wuhan it got contained fairly quickly so I don't know lots of questions unanswered and a lot of people around the world have suffered from this not just the US India is hitting hard now too and it's been going on for I don't know now six six months six months we've been in shutdown yeah So, anyways, we're going to listen to President Trump's speech and um, see how he talks about China virus. It is my profound honor to address the United Nations General Assembly. 75 years after the end of World War II and the founding of the United Nations, we are once again engaged in a great global struggle. We have waged a fierce battle against Mm -hmm. the invisible enemy, the China virus, which has claimed countless lives in 188 countries. In the United States, we launched the most aggressive mobilization since the Second World War. We rapidly produced a record supply of ventilators, creating a surplus that allowed us to share them with friends and partners all around the globe. We pioneered life-saving treatments, reducing our fatality rate 85 percent since April. Thanks to our efforts, three vaccines are in the final stage of clinical trials. We are mass producing them in advance so they can be delivered immediately upon arrival. We will distribute a vaccine. We will defeat the virus. We will end the pandemic. And we will enter a new era of unprecedented prosperity, cooperation, and peace. As we pursue this bright future, We must hold accountable the nation which unleashed this plague onto the world, China. In the earliest days of the virus, China locked down travel domestically while allowing flights to leave China and infect the world. China condemned my travel Mm -hmm. ban on their country, even as they canceled domestic flights and locked citizens in their homes. The Chinese government and the World Health Organization which is virtually controlled by China, falsely declared that Mm -hmm. there was no evidence of human-to-human transmission. Later, they falsely (laughs) said people without symptoms would not spread the disease. The United Nations must Mm -hmm. hold China accountable for their actions. In addition, every year, China dumps millions and millions of tons of plastic and trash into the oceans, overfishes other countries' waters, destroys vast swaths of coral reef and emits more toxic mercury into the atmosphere than any country anywhere in the world. China's carbon emissions are nearly twice what the U.S. has, and it's rising fast. By contrast, after I withdrew from 
the one-sided Paris Climate Accord. Last year, America reduced its carbon emissions by more than any country in the agreement. Those who attack America's exceptional environmental record while ignoring China's rampant pollution are not interested mm -hmm. in the environment. They only want to punish America, and I will not stand for it. If the United Nations is to be an effective organization, it must focus on the real problems of the world. This includes terrorism, the oppression of women, yeah. forced labor, drug trafficking, human and sex Uyghur trafficking, yeah. religious persecution, and the ethnic cleansing of religious minorities. America mm -hmm. will always be a leader in human rights. My administration is advancing religious liberty, opportunity for women, the decriminalization of homosexuality, combating human trafficking, and protecting unborn children. We also know that American prosperity is the bedrock of freedom and security all over the world. In yeah. three short years, we built the greatest economy in history, and we are quickly doing it again. Our military has increased substantially in size. We spent $2.5 trillion over the last four years on our military. We have the most powerful military anywhere in the world, and it's not even close. We stood up yeah. to decades of China's trade abuses. We revitalized the NATO alliance, where other countries are now paying a much more fair share. We forged historic partnerships with Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador to stop human smuggling. We are standing with the people of Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela in their righteous struggle for freedom. We withdrew from the terrible Iran nuclear deal and imposed crippling sanctions on the world's leading state sponsor of terror. We obliterated the ISIS caliphate 100 percent, killed its founder and leader, al-Baghdadi, and eliminated the world's top terrorist, Qasim Soleimani. This month, we achieved a peace deal between Serbia and Kosovo. We reached a landmark breakthrough with two peace deals in the Middle East after decades of no progress. Israel, the United Arab Emirates, and Bahrain all signed a historic peace agreement in the White House with many other Middle Eastern countries to come. Good. They are coming fast, yeah. and they know That's it's amazing. great for them, and it's That's great for the world. Fighting These now. groundbreaking peace deals are the dawn of the new Middle East. By taking a different approach, we have achieved different outcomes, far superior outcomes. We took an approach, and the approach worked. We intend to deliver more peace agreements shortly, and I have never been more optimistic for the future of the region. There is no blood in the sand. Those days are hopefully mm -hmm. over. As we speak, the United States is also working to end the war in Afghanistan, and we are bringing our troops home. Good. America is fulfilling our destiny as peacemaker, but it is peace through yes. strength. Yeah. We are stronger now than ever before. Our weapons are at an advanced level like we've never had before, like, frankly, we've never even thought of having before. And I only pray to God that we never have mm -hmm. to use them. For decades, the same tired voices proposed the same failed solutions, pursuing global ambitions at the expense of their own people. But only when you take care of your own citizens will you find a true basis for cooperation. As President, I have rejected the failed approaches of the past, and I am proudly putting America first, just as you should be putting exactly. your countries yeah. first. That's okay. That's what you should That's be doing. That's what you should be doing. I am supremely confident that next Peacefully. year, when we yeah. gather in person, we will be in the midst of one of the greatest years in our history. 2021. And frankly, We're done. Yeah. 2020. in the history of the world. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless America. And God bless the United Nations. Yeah. I love how when they zoomed in on China, he looked, like, skeptical of everything. And he kept mm. looking side to side. Yeah, like, he didn't want the attention on him. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine um, trying to represent China, China. right now. Um, Especially when Trump made that speech. Yeah. Because he point blank. I mean, we know where the virus started from. And if people would let us in to investigate 
even like an outside party. It doesn't have to be necessarily in the U.S., but yeah. we don't know what happened. And because of that, who else do you want us to blame, you know? We don't really trust China right now because the facts they've given us what it was from a restaurant. So, yeah, it's not very, they're not very trustworthy, I should say. No, we've heard it from the FBI director. There's yeah. been so many cases. Um, security not risks. Security risks, things like TikTok, things like, um, you know, professors selling information back to China. Yeah. You know, so where is your allegiance? Yeah, and it's also, it's going to be harder for other Chinese people to actually come in here for real businesses because of what China's yeah. doing right now. Because yeah. China's not helping them or their people. Or no. the world at all. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, like you said, I know there are some Chinese people that come here for a better life, that come here to get away from the CCP, that yeah. want the freedom of speech, that want to be able to look on their phone and watch whatever they want to watch and make decisions of their own, not be told what to do, you know. But there needs to be, you know... Like you said, then there are the people that are selling stuff back to China mm -hmm. that are getting a bad name for every Chinese person, which we don't want that. We want people yeah. that come here to the U.S. especially. This is your country. When you come here to have a better life, to take that oath, this is your country. You know, like Daddy, he came from India. He loves India. India is home, away from home, always will be. But if... He, U.S. needs him to pick up a gun and to go to war for the U.S., he would do it because yeah. he's been here for so long and this is his country. This is what feeds him. This is what gave him the job, families here, everything. You know, you, you can't... But I like what he said in the end about you need to have love for your country yeah. do the best that you can for your country it doesn't have to be the u.s but it's what country you're living in right so if you don't love the u.s and you live here there are many other countries go to the country that you love that you mm -hmm. will fight for that you'll fight for that you agree with their policies that you like what they're doing to their people you know if you otherwise you're not doing a service for anybody. You're yeah. not doing a service for the country you live in that you hate. You're not doing a service for the country that you could go to and be a part of and feel proud. That's what it really should be about. Yeah. And I like that he said that in the end. Like, it really is about doing the best things. And from what he said, um, I've known about some of them, but I didn't know about all of them. Like, um, the emissions, um, I didn't know about that. So there's a lot of stuff that, um, he's been doing that have been good. These peace treaties in the Middle East, that's huge, huge, because we know the war has been going on there for a long time. Yeah. So no more bloodshed. It's the first in many, many years. Um, you know, the... But his big thing is China. Yeah. Getting them accountable, there's been way, way too many people that have died from this, that way have too been many affected cases. by it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not just the people that have gotten the virus. It's the doctors that have done what they could. It's, you know, people trying to make a vaccine. It's the it's families. families that have lost loved ones. It's the families that have lost jobs because they can't work because of the shutdown. And then companies that couldn't pay everybody that had to get rid of people. Yeah. You know, it's like, and, and the economy has hasn't really gone to crap yet. Trump has been keeping the companies and keeping the people with these stimulus bills afloat as best as he can. We're getting through this. I can't wait for 2020 to be over. Yeah. Over. But I think his message was very clear. China needs to be accountable and we have enough weaponry, so don't start crap. No. Which And I, this is why they're not starting crap yeah. is because they know that the U.S. is much stronger than them. And if they attack India, they're attacking U.S. They're attacking the four. The quad. Yeah. 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 I don't think they will because there's way too much inner turmoil in China and yeah. way too many people against them right now. This is why we are supporting Trump in this next election because yeah. we feel like he is the only person that can be tough on China, that can be tough with the policies, that can be tough, hopefully, with trade. Um, yeah. 
that's kind of where we would like to see. Um, we would like to see that Tibet bill signed, and we know he's going to f- fund the military, fund the police, mm-hmm. and and keep us tight militarily. Keep us safe. Yeah, keep us safe, because if not, I mean, China's already, you know, top manufacturing right now hub, yeah. top m- money hub, too, and if they hit the military, you see what they do to their people. If they're on top of the world, I am a fear of the rest of the world. Yeah. So... Anyways, um, President Trump did an amazing job. This was an awesome speech. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. And don't forget to subscribe. And join the wonderful Growing Jan family. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.